So a couple of weeks ago, I put out a poll to see what 15 minute meals all of you wanted to see. And it was clear that you wanted a little Thai inspiration in the kitchen. Now I've been to Thailand and I certainly love Thai food, but I just felt like this video in particular needed a little bit more of a pro's perspective. And luckily my friend Derek, he saw the post and he was down for collaboration, which works for me, finally a day off of the cooking. Plus Derek has been trained by some of the best chefs in Thailand and has been hosting a Thai supper club in Brooklyn for the past seven years. So Derek's gonna be coming to the studio today to showcase some of his go-to dishes that he turns to throughout the week that will hopefully change your idea of what a 15 minute Thai meal looks like. All right, the man has made it, the Thai master. <laughs> What's in there? Everything, so oh like these, are, these are diesel. These diesel like gas or just like diesel? No, like, just like <laughs> you can fit so much. Like this is not efficiently packed at all, but like the amount of stuff oh that my. you can in here this is the Thai master this is very unorganized don't judge right now but <laughs> when i'm doing dinners and it's more organized yeah. i have two of these and you can fit you can do uh, like a whole, you can do like 15 people of that and wow. two of these i just want to um, see what's going on i see lemongrass i see a lot of pantry items all you need is just like fresh stuff at this point right basically. yeah yeah exactly wow this, this is, is like a little uh this is a this little is a sort of um Thai pantry lesson right here in your pack what is that oh smell you know oh what's fun today? Because we brought we brought some canned stuff in this. Yeah. It'll just be nice to taste it side by side when you see. Really, I just want to get your reaction there. Love it. You know. So this dish is yum kai dao, which is an egg salad uh, in Thai terms. It's based on the category of yum, which are mixed salads. So you have a protein, and you have other ingredients that can go in it. So if you have leftover chicken, for example, you can kind of take the same baseline and kind of mix it all together. Is egg your favorite choice? Um, it is a favorite, especially because I whip it up all the time. Because you have eggs in the fridge. You typically will have onions or shallots and you can kind of you know, play around with it. First up, we're gonna make a Thai style dressing. This is the most common salad dressing. I'm gonna start by chopping limes. This is a Thai style cutting of lime, actually. <laughs> kind of get it into thirds. You're cutting right around the pith. And so you're kind of getting like an easy squeeze and, and maximum juice very quickly. Genius. Add in a little bit of palm sugar to the mortar, followed by some lime juice. The lime juice is gonna help dissolve the sugar really quickly. So I'm adding about four or five limes here. It really depends on how juicy your limes are. A little bit of fish sauce, basically equal parts to the lime juice. You want to balance out the sweetness with the sour and the salty. So I like to give this dressing a little bit of aromatic flavors. We do this by slicing a little bit of chili and lemongrass. By slicing these and putting them in, they'll slowly infuse versus pounding them in, which is gonna make it more of a concentrated spiciness. Now that the dressing's done, let's move on and prep the rest of the ingredients. So I'm gonna cut up some tomatoes. I like to cut them what I call consistently inconsistent. It gives a little more texture to the dish by making uneven cuts. And then the onion, I'm gonna cut from the root edge to the top into long strands. It gives a nice little bite and texture when you do it this way. So we're gonna roughly cut some cilantro, leaving in the stems. You don't wanna lose that flavor. Flavor. That'd be a waste. It's followed by some green onions, which is going to give us a little bit of extra pungency. You know they're uh, homegrown. Like, the, the supermarket would never let that little. Guy. No. I don't know what. They would not is. pass quality control. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now you're cracking eggs before. Or why do you do that rather than? Um. So we can cook three at once right into the wok. It's not. You're not uh, delaying in time. It's so quick. Yeah. It's just go in. It's just an easy. It's just cleaner. It's, it'll make it easier for you. So is this something you always are cooking in a wok? No. I mean you can do it in a pan, but I. I want to show it in a wok here because it goes up on the sides so you can put less oil in because the oil goes up whereas if you put it in a pan it's flat but it will work either way. You just need high heat but you know you can do this inside as well. And you should get a lighter. <laughs> this is dangerous. Oh! But you see, we're not gonna deep fry the egg, but you can use this. Oh my gosh, you know. said less oil. This is less oil. People get very uncomfortable here, but you know what? I did a, I did a, actually did this recipe for Serious Eats, and when I did it, I measured the oil after frying and before, and it doesn't actually absorb because of the heat. The shallow fry, we're gonna go in, in, in a moment here. You see, I turned the heat down. Good luck doing that in your kitchen. You can, you can. Now you've turned the heat down. Yeah, so that's it doesn't need to be that high. We, we're going for crispiness, and we're we're not going for a, a yolky egg for this version. There are two versions. You can um, cook it like this and make sure the egg is really yolky, but today we want it so we can cut into the egg. You see, it's not deep frying. It's chilling. We're going to flip it right now. So it's like so crispy, so it really will, it'll get the dressing. The heat is off right now, because I do this inside all the time on a normal, a normal stove top. Just make sure your heat is, the oil is smoking before the eggs go in. So you get a little bit of goo, but you get 
You get that there. Again, irregular cuts, you know, it doesn't need to be different sizes. Yeah. But it's not that there's no knife skills, it's just that it, it gives you texture. So now that we're done with the eggs, I'm gonna mix together the salad first, just to kind of get all the ingredients to marry. So we're gonna add the egg now to the mixing bowl. This is actually what I'm really going for, a gooey, but like set. Yeah and finally the delicious dressing before giving it a quick mix. Be very gentle here, you just want it to mix quickly, but just enough so the egg can soak in the dressing. This is, this is certainly one of the most beautiful salads I've ever seen, and something that you're not really used to over here in the West. Totally different feel. I mean, fried egg in there. At the same time, it's something that I would throw together. Right, yes. Like... Make sure you dunk the, dunk the egg a little bit in that dressing down there. Yeah. I appreciate when you can make the egg the star of the show. Yeah, right? If you haven't been to Thailand and you tasted that, you would know that that is something from the motherland. <laughs> something special, something right? Something special. Something special. This. That's what I'll say. Yeah. It's um, just so right. The lemongrass little hops of fragrance, the uh, creaminess of the egg. Yeah, you cook it really hard so that it can absorb that dressing, but still stay uh, crispy. Chili is fine. Sometimes this guy, like, rocks me with the chili. You gotta train them when they're young, you know? I just appreciate when a culture can really nail down a proper salad. Mm -hmm. like, you don't find many over here, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Good ones. Yeah. So light. It's, we always keep it light, you know? Great way to start the day. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, so what are you prepping for now? What's next on the, uh, the agenda? Um, we're gonna make some sticky rice because you cannot eat Thai food without rice. We're gonna eat this with lab, uh, a minced meat salad for lack of better term. Not as popular as Pad Thai, but it is one of the dishes that has made it over here. In oh the yeah, center. people know. People that like wanna tell you what they know about Thai food, they're like, you know about lab? Eating lab, the style we're making today is Northeastern. You'll also find it in the North, which is a very different version, but both the North and Northeast are eating lab with sticky rice, which I have here. Uh, it's so it last night so it's the grains are soft already and what's great about sticky rice in 15 minute meals is once it's soaked we're gonna throw that on the steamer mm -hmm. and what do we got the amount we're doing is gonna take about 10 minutes it's soaked overnight and also you can leave it soak in the fridge once it's soaked drain it leave it in the fridge it'll be fine for a few days I'm going to put the sticky rice in a little cheesecloth here and then put it in the basket here that'll take about 10 minutes so meanwhile we're gonna make some lab so now that we have the rice going we're gonna cook off some pork here the main part of the dish we're gonna add some water to the pan first which is gonna help lubricate the pork and then we're gonna cook it quickly about three to five minutes the goal here is not to brown the meat but just to break it up so constantly use the spoon and mash the meat up a little bit and while that meat is cooking through we're going to prep the shallots and the herbs so i have some cilantro that i'm going to roughly chop leave the stem in again this is flavor followed by a little bit of green onion cut into small pieces and then some shallots sliced really thinly finally pick a little bit of mint and set it aside so you've prepped the ingredients similar to the last recipe now this is really interesting because you just boiled meat, which is very counterintuitive. Yeah, you know, it lets us achieve a very like pungent flavor when the onions go in and the chili and the fish sauce. We're seasoning it afterwards, right? All the flavor comes afterwards. I like to go in with the shallots first, which kind of wilts them a bit and give it a stir while the heat is warm. You can start seasoning with the, the chili flakes. Now, how much chili do you want, Mike? <laughs> wow, so what are these? These are Thai dried chili flakes. So you take Thai dried chilies and you toast them in a pan until they're pretty dark or you buy ground chili powder. And this is, again, this is to taste. I do it by look. I think, think Mike needs a little bit of spice oh today. My. It is lab after all, right? That's when you start to get the color, right? It oh, comes from the yeah. chili, not the browning. So we're utilizing this dressing from the last salad because it's very similar for this purpose. So it's something you can have. Like if you have this in your fridge, it seems like you can make a lot. You have of the time golden ticket to life. Let's uh, put all this dressing actually. So you can see it's a little bit looser now because of the, the fish sauce and the lime juice. We're gonna thicken it with the kalkua, which is the toasted rice. So it's rice that's been toasted in a pan before it's cooked, so it's not steamed, just toasted dry and pounded into a powder. And the powder consistency is up to you. You can see I like it quite coarse. And I'm gonna add a little bit now so it doesn't become gloopy, but you'll already start to see it pull together. This is a very popular ingredient, I'm guessing. Absolutely, yeah, and Isan's style Lao cooking, yes. Um, you can start to smell it. That's when the roasted rice flavor comes out. All of the herbs go in now. This is when it starts to become magical. And then this should be perfect timing, right, on the sticky rice. Yeah, let's check it out here. Nice look like sticky rice. Grains are separate, but it's wow. stuck together, you know? Yeah, you should go for that. That's perfect absorber right there. Right? Wow. What's the best way to, uh, to do this? <laughs> well, sticky rice, the best way is your hand. Create a little bit of a, you can push ah, it in and then go in. Felt like a hand. And then create a, a nice light bite. 
It's so, so like new, the textures, the flavors, but for you, I'm, you know, you this have is, this every day. This but. is basic food, this is lifestyle. But talk about a 15 minute meal here and how much flavor you're getting in that amount of time. Yeah. And the pot, so one pot. It's not a lot of like, you know, Plus cooking, you know, but like one, one pot to cook the whole thing. The thing that initially <laughs> just hits you is the crunch and toasty flavor of the rice. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing that's just like, that's different. I personally am always looking for texture in my food. And that's the right texture yeah. for this, especially with boiled meat. And then you have the herb which really like lift it up. It's so good, first of all, but not for a second are you like, oh, I wish that meat was browned. It's just right, it's a completely new technique. I think I'm seeing that theme already building with these Thai dishes. Mm -hmm. It's just like a whole new culinary uh, way of preparing food. You can cook through the Thai lens, you know? You study the techniques and you keep learning about them. And I'm learning every day, you know? Okay, so what do we got next? So we have Pat Un Sen. Um, a stir fry of glass noodles and a lot of vegetables. It's very flexible. This is one of those dishes, home style cooks, you just kind of throw in things that are in your, your pantry. And I'm pretty, Mike knows, yeah. I'm pretty particular. Like if I have a pot siu or a pot thai or a cool guy, like different dishes, I, I want to stick to what they are. But this one I'm, I think is very flexible. Perfect for a like, 15 minute meal. Yeah. So for this dish, like all stir fries, you should have everything prepped before you start cooking. So we're gonna start by soaking some glass noodles, also known as mung bean noodles, just in some room temperature water. While the noodles rehydrate, we're gonna prep the rest of the ingredients. To give the chicken a head start on flavor, we're gonna cut it up and marinate it before cooking the stir fry. So we're gonna slice it into some thin pieces and then add it to a mixing bowl. Next, a little bit of oyster sauce, which is gonna give a little bit of sweetness and more savory umami. We're going to add some fish sauce for salt and as much white pepper as you desire. I like quite a bit. While that chicken's marinating, we'll proceed on with prepping the rest of the ingredients. For the vegetables, we're going to start with an onion. We're going to cut it pole to pole so it's long strands, which is going to give us a nice texture, followed by some tomatoes. Cut them into small pieces. Here I'm doing it into eighths. Next, I'm going to shred up some cabbage. Add as much cabbage as you want, but this looks right to me right now. And then we're going to cut some long red chili. You can use any neutral red chili here into long strips. And lastly, I'm going to cut some green onions. I prefer the, the tops of the green onion for color and just softness. Now that the veggies are done, we're going to prep an all-purpose stir-fry sauce that can last in your fridge pretty much indefinitely. Add equal parts of everything. So we're gonna do two tablespoons here of oyster sauce, two tablespoons of thin soy sauce, two tablespoons of fish sauce, a little bit of black soy for color, followed by about a teaspoon of sugar, and then again, as much white pepper as you want. Stir that together and add a bit of water to help it dissolve, and the water will also help cook the noodles. So this is one of the dishes that everything is prepped beforehand and then we're quickly stir frying so you've got your veggies got your marinated chicken stir fry sauce and soaked noodles but that only took 10 minutes right and now this is going to take what two <laughs> probably two noodles you can soak them ahead too and leave them in your fridge pre-soaked oh got it yeah you can also make this in a pan right yeah this one i would do in a, either a wok or like a nonstick pan i think there's a misconception that everything's cooked in a wok in thailand people at home they cook at home like here there's normal stove tops induction like it's just that we like to cook in this here. You know, we can. <laughs> a little bit of oil. This happens quick, guys, so. Chicken. Oh, about the onions here. So yeah, we're just cooking it. We want the vegetables to stay pretty crisp. It's a pretty quick cook before we go in with other things. Cabbage. Layering vegetables depending on how quick they cook. Exactly. You see how much this is, is such a vegetable dish, though, you know? It's like, oh, we're just yeah. wilting it down. We're going with the, the noodles here. And then a little bit of water to help help cook it. Some sauce in now. You want to kind of, you don't want to break it, but you just do a little swirl motion. Very important to have everything prepped. That's why, because there's boom, 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 you know? This looks like it can handle the sauce. I just want to check if the noodle's done. It's gonna keep cooking, but it doesn't need much more. So a little bit of uh, water to deglaze the pan a bit here. And the tomatoes will also help deglaze, and the chilies. Little oil for the egg. Double egg. We're feeling good today. You just want it to really set first. You see, like, and then we'll take all the noodles, kind of put it on top. Let it sit for a moment. Now we go on the green onions. Don't drop them like that. When it heats off. You see the egg will come with it. That's a lot of food, you know? <laughs> Two packets of noodles. It's nice to see uh, a shift away from the patsy 
when it comes to stir fried noodles. Similar, but you know, it's just different noodles. It's interesting because it's like the stereotype of the whole country has just pot siu, but there's I so know. much more. Oh, I like the tomatoes in there. Yeah. That's like a stir fry ingredient you don't think of. Contrast too between the dishes we just did. This just really screams like the Chinese influence, the noodles. Like you taste the oyster sauce, the soy sauce. The other ones were very Thai flavored, you know? That's true. Those felt very unique to yeah. Thailand. This is like this starts a classic to... stir fry. Yeah. Which is what Thai cuisine is a lot of times. Like a lot of the noodle dishes, they're Thai Chinese. Awesome. All right, final dish. What's in the we're, we're finally there. So this is a shrimp dry curry in Thai. It's called Gung Papar King, and it is a essentially a dry curry. So you have a curry paste. What do we have here? That's a store right. This is a store-bought curry paste. A lot of times you think of curry as just like a you know a coconut curry or something that's wet, but this is a, a utilization of the paste where it's really dry. So you can use your own curry paste. You don't need to make your own curry paste. However, if you are me, you will enjoy making homemade curry paste. This is just based on chilies. It is a, a chili paste. Chili paste lemongrass, galangal, makrut, lime zest, shallots and garlic, and of course some shrimp paste. Most people will use store-bought and that is totally fine. Even in Thailand, home cooks go to the market and they buy curry paste, so there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to learn more about Thai food and get into it, you'll start making your own paste. So that was very quick prep, and now we are stir frying curry. Yeah, we're gonna we're just gonna toast the paste until it's pretty aromatic. Derek was the first person to open me up to like not just adding curry paste to your dish and dissolving it in. No, we're not making a smoothie here. This is not jam. <laughs> this is not jamba juice. Just like you would saute onion or garlic. Exactly. These are aromatic. Exactly. It's the same same principle, right? This dish is quite. Um, it has quite a bit of oil. You want the paste to really infuse in the. Oil. Oil. So we're like cooking this out kind of as you would tomato paste or other aromatics like Mike said until we get a darker color You really want the smell to come out the smell is very important when you start smelling the things then you know you're, You can move on I'm gonna add a little bit of palm sugar now You'll see it go from this red color to a darker color as it caramelizes We're adding this in now so we can get that caramelization before the water comes in So it gives us a little bit of sweetness in the paste. You see how much darker it's getting quickly We're also gonna season with a little bit of fish sauce now and maybe at the end probably about three parts fish sauce to that amount of sugar. That also stops the cooking a bit if it's if it's threatening to burn. By the way, Derek has not used salt once today. Everything is <laughs> with fish sauce in this Thai kitchen, yeah. which is amazing. We would be lying. There is a little bit of salt in the, in the curry paste. <laughs> Let's give this a little bit of taste. You want this to be pretty seasoned now because the shrimp is not gonna get the flavor. You see how dark it's getting now? I'm glossy because it's like caramelized. So now we add in a little bit of this. Some lime leaves. Whole pieces, which are gonna infuse in the oil too, a bit. Followed by the shrimp. We've got some D veins, peeled, beautiful. These are gorgeous. These are gorgeous. I'm just cooking it through. With this particular dish, you want the curry to be in abundance and very cakey on the ingredients, as you can see. It almost becomes like this like glaze in a way, you know? The shrimp are nice. And add a little water as needed to, to help moisten the sauce. See how it becomes more just like a sauce. I mean, it's like you want to find that like balance of it being saucy enough, but also really coating the, the protein. Now that the shrimp are pretty much cooked through, we're gonna just add in the long beans. Wilt them slightly, but keep the color. It's a little bit of lime leaves in now, and we'll save the rest for the garnish. Oh, you can just smell that when the lime, when the lime leaf hits. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, and we'll serve that up over some rice. Put a little bit of this beautiful haircut of lime leaves on top. As far as the flow of the meals today, even though we had four separate 15 minute meals, it was like a perfectly planned menu from, you know, light salad to like moving our way mm. up noodle dish to now, you know, the protein. We like to keep it light here. But it was a good <laughs> flow. So this, how do we do this? Just eat a shrimp. I mean, come on. Oh, the sweetness mm. of the palm sugar is nice. Mm. Really balances out. <clears throat> Curry. Make sure you get some rice. The rice is not secondary. Yeah. It's one of those meals is just like you're eating it, you're shaking your head. There's a lot of shrimpy flavor here. The shrimp that Mike got today was super, super nice. I do use some very nice shrimp paste in my curry paste. But I also in this particular dish use dried shrimp powder in the curry paste. So this is like shrimp, oh, yeah. fermented shrimp and dried shrimp in one dish. There's no lack of flavor. No, no. This, we, this, we, this is <laughs> like going. For that, it. That's what's cool about this this dish is it's like a it's a concentrated curry. Yeah. Right? So when you have this curry paste left over in your fridge and you're sick of eating another curry or like what do I do with yeah. it use it in a different way you know marinate meat with it or mm. cook a dry curry like this yeah. use whatever protein you have it doesn't need to be shrimp it's just a new technique 
for using curry paste. All of these dishes today, in general, extremely unique for me, very eye-opening. I understand why you have dove head first, pretty much put your whole life into this cuisine because there's so much to learn. It's why I did not, you know, get on here and do a 15 minute Thai video by myself because I just feel like, darn, yeah. you know, it's so intricate. Um, and you know, just what I've learned today is incredible. Yeah, I appreciate you having me here to do this. Every day I'm learning still about Thai food, you know? It's like everything, you have to keep learning. Yeah. But that's what makes it interesting. Thank you very much, Derek, for showing showing me and showing the people Absolutely. how to cook up some yummy Thai and we're gonna go eat this, uh, yeah. the rest of this. Adios. See you guys soon.